So uh, I'm John Sundberg, President, uh, CEO. This is my family. Uh, four kids, boy, girl, 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 15, 13, 11, and 9 every two years, uh, whether I like it or not. But uh, it's been great, and uh, they, they're the group that really kind of keeps me going. So, um, so Minnesota, why Minnesota? Well, we did the keg event in Colorado the first three years, and, and, and that was an excellent event there, and, and I really like Colorado for its openness, its freeness, its uh, nature, etc. cetera. And, uh, and that was an excellent place to hold the keg event. Um, but really, it felt like it was time for a change. And Minnesota is obviously our home. Uh, it's a lot easier for us to do the event here. But, but really, Minnesota has a lot of things to offer, or I think it has a really good core. And uh, Minnesota has industrious uh, place, hard workers, uh, creators, artists, inventors, all kinds of great things. And so we thought we'd highlight a little bit of that. So uh, Minnesota is the home of rollerblades. Does anybody have rollerblades? Anybody wiped out on rollerblades? Yeah, well, we also have uh, excellent medical staff here. And so rollerblades, of course, but uh, we have uh, medical breakthroughs, pacemaker, oxygen masks. Um, for fun, we are the leaders of the uh, game Oregon Trail. Uh, all kinds of food products come from Minnesota, food inventions, etc. The Honeycrisp Apple, uh, Cheerios, of course, Spam, which I actually am a fan of for camping. And then also uh, Zubas, which, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which very few things are banned in the world of kinetic in terms of clothing. We've got mixed plaids is out and Zubas are out, but uh, <laughs> shorts are in if you notice. Um, and uh, you know some things to do while in Minnesota. So I, I was actually talking to some people this morning and. And uh, they got in a little bit late after the event last night, so they went to a local brew pub, and turns out they had a bacon flight. So I don't know uh, what place around here serves the different types of bacons, but they had a bacon flight, so you have to search that out. But um, if you can, check out the Skyway system. It's unique. Um, it's required in the winter, um, so that's something to see. First Avenue Bar is actually probably about six, seven blocks away from here. They've got great bands. Um, so where actually I met my wife, <laughs> and, uh, and that's a, a neat place. Uh, we'll actually be going to the Twins Stadium later this week for anybody who's staying uh, for training. So that's a, an excellent venue. I think it's the best ballpark in the country, but uh, maybe you can be the judge there. And if you do have some time before you fly out, the airport is actually very close to the Mall of America, and that may be uh, something to check out too. So again, welcome to KEG. It's our fourth event. Um, and it's really going to represent our biggest steps in our company history. So uh, let's get that kicked off. So first of all, I'd like to say thanks to everybody for coming to the event. Um, it takes a lot of effort to, to kick this off, and a lot of people within the company had worked on this. So Mary, uh, Cassandra, Matt, uh, Derek, these are all people that have spent months and months uh, getting this event uh, kicked off. So I'd like to say thanks to you guys that. I'd also like to say thanks to our customers. We've got companies that are bringing poster stories, telling uh, other companies how they're doing, uh, how they're benefiting from the product, both uh, good experiences and then things to avoid. So I'd like to thank uh, you for that. I'd like to say thanks to our partners. We've got a number of partners that are here today, and we've got a growing partner platform uh, throughout uh, the country and actually the whole world, so that's thanks to them. And then also thanks to our employees in general. We have the people who are really the main leaders of KEG, but, but everybody in the company actually steps up in one way or the next, whether it's building the catalog, building training content, uh, getting out the word to customers, uh, etc. So thanks to everybody for, for that. And also uh, thanks to my friends. I've got a few friends here that are uh, ex-employees of Kinetic Data are just mentors for me in the past, and I have a couple of them, and I'd like to say thanks for uh, attending and seeing what our company is all about. So thanks to all these groups that are uh, pushing us along, and what the result is, we've actually uh, kicked off this year with our best quarter ever as a company. So uh, most revenue, most profit, uh, most companies uh, coming on board uh, in our history. 
And, uh, and that's just this first quarter of this year. And, and if you're familiar with the software world at all in terms of sales, in general, it's the fourth quarter that you get the majority of your business. Companies tend to keep their funds and their projects and that kind of thing uh, kind of tight throughout the year. In the fourth quarter, they usually move forward. And, and we had a very nice fourth quarter. Um, but the first quarter has exceeded anything we've ever done in the past. And it's really kind of a pattern um, and a trend that's going to continue, and you'll see why. So uh, thanks to everybody uh, for uh, assisting us in that. So um, this platform for success, who's actually been to KEG before? And who's new? Excellent, excellent. So about half new. Um, well, this is uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So what really is KEG? If you haven't been to KEG before, KEG is, I'm hoping, uh, the best event you've been to. <laughs> um, but really, it's a social event for people to interact with each other, uh, tell, them, tell them about the successes that they're having at their company, um, and really sort of expand the, the experiences that you can take in uh, without necessarily going through the pain. So if you're going to interact with another company and they've tried some things and it wasn't good for them, you can you know, maybe avoid that. Or they can produce uh, examples of things that have been successful for them and you can take those back and, and reproduce those at your own company. So really it's a forum for us to show you, the customer, what we're doing, but also for the customer to show each other what they're doing, and then also for us to um, to really listen and see where you guys are going and help us to make the product a better product. So again, interact with each other, let each other know what's working, what's not. Um, we're going to show the direction and, uh, and really kind of go uh, in the direction that the customers want us to go. All with the goal of really making tomorrow a better day. So that's what Kinetic's about, is uh, improving these processes and and really sharing those experiences across different companies. And so making tomorrow a better day. So I, I say that quite a bit, actually. And what we really try to do at Kinetic is produce these solutions that each person that's participating in the process, their job is better because of our solution. And so, um, so every step in the process, whether it's the requester, the fulfiller, the manager, the reporter, uh, executives, et cetera, we want to make it better. And we want to make it better for everybody. So that's what we're really focusing on with each release of our software, is to get in and make a specific area better. So that's a big driver for us. So a little bit of background about how we end up building this software and how did we get here. Um, high level, what I'm going to do is talk about uh, what has driven us in the past, what has been uh, influential in terms of uh, requirements, uh, projects, uh, product releases, etc., and then where are we going, which is the, the big thing for platform. So how did we get here? So interestingly enough, we're in Minnesota, of course. We started the company uh, in Minnesota, and really what I did is about 18 years ago, drove to the state capitol in St. Paul, filled out a piece of paper, created kinetic data. And um, I'd never done that before. It cost $55. Anybody can create a company pretty easily. And so um, it's, when you fill out paperwork for creating a company, it, it says, how many shares do you want? I'm like, huh. How about 4 million? <laughs> so I created 4 million shares. So eight, $55, 4 million shares, I own them, and, and that was fine. And uh, so after a while, I. You know, I did that. I was actually still working at 3M at the time, and, and uh, I was planning to leave and, and you know, really start the company, so I got going and ended up uh, interacting with an accountant, and they said, ah, that's way too many shares, so changed it to 4,000, and so now it's 4,000 shares. But I thought it was really interesting that to get going was very easy. Just fill out the paperwork, fill out uh, how many shares you want, and poof, you have a company. But um, Obviously, that really isn't enough. You really kind of have to have a focus of marketing, uh, products, customers, et cetera. And, and it was kind of an uh, awareness. And, and it's kind of analogous to a lot of things. It's easy to get started, but once you get rolling, the rubber hits the road, and you kind of find out that uh, 
there's a lot more to it. And, and so we're trying to help companies to get going in this self-service space, but actually once you own it, make it a lot easier. So that's kind of one of the, the themes that are going on here. So, um, so once the company got going, started doing a lot of the consulting work around Remedy. So started off actually being a development organization, uh, consulting around the Remedy space, and really producing specialized custom solutions on the Remedy platform. So many people use it for the whole ITSM world. Uh, we were doing software that was custom for businesses to help them run their business. And that's really kind of how it, how it got started. And we saw patterns in what we were doing with companies. So we were helping them to make uh, solutions that were uh, easy for their customers to make a, we'll say a request, but it was really to get a, a piece of equipment repaired, um, to fill out contracts, you know, that kind of thing. We just, we saw these patterns of people wanting to make things easier, uh, more manageable, more reportable, faster, quicker to address market conditions, et cetera. And so in those patterns, we, um, we started building some software. And, uh, and at the same time, we branched out to Sydney, Australia, with the idea of taking the software that we're building, being able to do 24-hour development, 24-hour uh, support, and really kind of run full bore with building software. And so we built that software, and, uh, and we launched the first software of ours uh, called Kinetic Survey at the BMC User World in Washington, D.C. Does anybody remember that event at all? Washington, D.C., uh, BMC User World? Well, it was an excellent uh, event. And what was interesting for me is this is the first time we had any software to really show. So we had a, uh, a booth set up there and had lots of people coming by and seeing our software. And, uh, and that was a lot of fun because that was new to me. But what was really interesting is the companies that were interested uh, had like lightning bolt interest in it. And so the event was like a Monday through Wednesday and, uh, and we were doing our booth and, and that kind of thing. And they, uh, I don't know, probably had maybe 500 some customers there. And one of the organizations is actually the uh, um, ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. They were there and they saw Connect and they just walked by our booth, didn't really say much of anything. Then Wednesday night they come to me and they say, hey, we really like that kinetic survey software. Could you meet tomorrow with our executives? They're going to come in to talk to you. It's like, oh, sure. Uh, when, when would you like to, they can only do it at 7.15 in the morning. So that was a lot of fun because we were planning to fly out at like 10 in the morning, so to change our flights, et cetera. But really what happened was um, we kind of hit a bit of a nerve in terms of the customer space. They were looking for easy forms to fill out um, and be able to create many custom forms. And that just hit a nerve with the ATF. And, uh, and so that was kind of my first experience with you know, really kind of meeting the customer needs with a product. Simultaneously, like the same time we uh, kicked off that event, we put in uh, our first Google ad and I put in the Google ad on Saturday. Uh, had never done that before. I think I paid five cents per click. And Monday morning, I got a call from Intel. <laughs> I was like, hype. <laughs> so, uh, so ATF, very interested. Intel, very interested. And, and we had hit a nerve, and we knew it. And, uh, and the customers really liked what we were doing. And it took off. It went very well at the beginning. And so getting those first customers uh, interested was very easy. Learning how to sell, learning how to navigate um, procurement and all that kind of thing was new to us, but we did get that going and, uh, and it was quite successful. To the point where we ended up taking that survey software and modifying it and creating the Kinetic Request product, um, which is really designed for people to come to the system make requests, get fulfillment, et cetera. And we built the calendar product, the schedule product, the task product, and we just kind of expanded, expanded, expanded um, across uh, the different areas. And what was really nice about that is not only were we getting customer attention, we were certainly getting partner attention and competitor attention, but we also started getting covered by analyst groups. 
And that was really kind of eye-opening to us because you know, we were sort of interacting with our customers and, and talking to them and getting feedback on what they wanted, what they needed. But it wasn't until we started interacting with the analysts that um, our vision really changed. And it was interacting with them, and, and they were kind of highlighting to us that there's a market far greater uh, available than what we've been interacting with. And they really kind of helped us to become aware of that. And they also helped us to get the word out. So did anybody read the Gartner report that, for the Kinetic Request product? A handful of people. Well, they ranked us number two in the space of about 20, and uh, I think we're one of the two or three companies that aren't a billion dollar company. <laughs> um, so most of these are very you know, big, IBM, BMC, CAHP, New Scale, uh, which is Cisco now. Those are all the competitors in our space, and, uh, and we ranked higher than all of them. And I think it's because the vision was right. And the vision that we have is, let's nail this request management and let companies do what they want with the software, have it look the way they want, fit it into their existing processes, and take it as fast as they want. Versus our competitors tend to bundle their solution with a different solution with the real goal of getting those companies to use this entire other thing, not necessarily nail request management. So the companies that really did top notch in that uh, report are the ones that were independent and would work with everybody. And that was part of our philosophy from the beginning is to be able to work with everything. And that was uh, nice to be um, uh, recognized by the, the analysts. So interacting with the analysts really helped us to get awareness to the new markets. And, and we're really sort of getting to know our customers um, and, and really kind of driving the solutions across uh, different areas. So that's kind of a bit of the background. So last year, so that was up until last year, all that analyst and launching new products, et cetera. Last year, we started to really take our marketing message to a new direction. And we launched the ERM message, so Enterprise Request Management. So we kind of don't really talk about service catalogs per se. We talk about Enterprise Request Management, which is really to drive these types of solutions across the entire company. So we did that. We purchased our first company, Code Row, which happens to be all the way from Minneapolis, so kind of a foreign uh, organization. But uh, anyways, brought them in. There was a lot of a lot learning in that case, and, uh, and so that happened last year. Uh, we released new products. Uh, we exist, uh, enhanced uh, the other products, and we're you know building, building, building new stuff, which we're about to see. So with the ERM. It was real purposeful to kind of come up with some language that was uh, certainly met the need, but also kind of address some other things. So typically what we're trying to do is drive these solutions across the entire organization. And we would certainly interact with uh, IT organizations, and they had the ITIL framework and service catalogs and that kind of thing. And what we saw as people tried to uh, bring the solution outside of IT is this IT terminology became problematic. So they go to the HR organization and the HR would say, that's IT software. They go to the um, facilities organization and they'd be talking incidents and changes and it just wasn't right for facilities. And just the whole wording um, was problematic, but the concepts were good. So we came up with this enterprise request management, which is really kind of different terminology for service catalogs. It's all about self-service and everybody seems to want self-service but everybody sort of has, um, we'll say, turf that they want to pro protect and, um, and bringing in some other organization's terminology into theirs was problematic. So enterprise request management kicked off. Uh, we did a whole bunch of uh, marketing around that. Uh, we have blog articles, of course, but the websites. And what we're starting to see now is uh, we're getting uh, RFPs for enterprise request management. We see other companies that we kind of consider in our space using enterprise request management as uh, their marketing. And I think that it's been well received in terms of uh, solving a problem, but yet still getting the message across. So that was a, a big effort uh, that was been going on last year and uh, will continue. In terms of you know activity last year, so we bought uh, this company Code Row and 
for the first real thing that they did with our company was attended keg last year so that's a kind of quite a kickoff for a company is to fly across the country spend a week in another state just hanging out with customers and getting to know them but uh, so that was the start once that was over with then they they had to start coming to our company or our offices etc and and to do that, to go from Minneapolis to St. Paul, it, it turns out you need to get some shots. <laughs> so, uh, it's a, according to Minneapolis people, St. Paul is a whole other country. So, anyways, it, that was kind of a big shock. But you know, they adapted quite nicely. Uh, they were comfortable, certainly, in coming in. But what they really brought to us was this whole um, different way of thinking of software. So, they were building mobilized software for large organizations that were really sort of consumer-based. And so they brought this mobile capability, but this different thinking on how to make software easier. And that was the big thing in, in interacting with, um, with Code Row was to be able to bring a fresh way of thinking about our software, all about easier, easier, easier. And, uh, and that's what uh, we brought in last year. In addition to those things last year, we also launched a new product, the Kinetic Response product. Um, is anybody using kinetic response in the support world? Good, good. So kinetic response is kind of a different way to attack a problem. So generally in the IT space, most of the IT software tends to be about somebody calls in with an issue, you've got one-to-one -one working, um, and, and you get to resolution. Well, with the new softwares and kind of the new systems going on, these problems just are not as easy as they once were. It's not how do I get the printer to work, it's not how do I install this, it's more like uh, Salesforce is slow, the integrations to the payroll system are problematic, and it very quickly multiple people need to get involved in a solution. So the Kinetic Response product is about taking big problems <laughs> um, and making no problem, and by assembling the right team. So when you have this Salesforce issue, uh, you're going to certainly invite the network people right away, but they're going to bring in the Salesforce expert, they're going to bring in a database person, they're going to bring in an integrations person, they're going to bring in the customer. Next thing you know, you have five, six, seven people all working on a problem together. And that ability to assemble the team quickly, get everybody on the same page um, with the same information, check status easily, really brings these big problems to uh, a root cause and then uh, resolution and moving forward quicker. And so that's, it's really all about collaboration and uh, making it easier to get uh, the typical problems done. So that was a uh, kicked off new software for us. And one of the things that, about that is we want to make it that you can participate in these problems and, and help to resolve them anywhere you, you are. So with the Code Row um, organization and bringing them into the company, we were able to mobilize uh, that software, so that certainly there's a web component, um, but it's also a mobile component too. And those are in the uh, Google Play stores and the Apple app stores, and that's, it's kind of fun to, to see kinetic software in there. But that's something that's new for us, and, and you'll see more of it uh, in the future. And uh, we use it in our support calls. When the support call goes back two or three times, like through email, then we'll move it into a response and be able to track it all there and invite the uh, appropriate people to resolve. Uh, so that's the mobile version, and then here's the, uh, the web version for that. In addition, we uh, enhanced uh, other products, the Kinetic Task product and Kinetic Request are really our flagships, and there's a lot of energy that went into both of those uh, last year. So first, Kinetic Task. So, it's Kinetic Task 4.0, so the previous version I think was 3.2, and this was really one of those moves to a new platform. So uh, Kinetic Task uh, workflow engine uh, sits behind Kinetic Request and, uh, and stores its data in the Remedy platform. Well, with Kinetic Task 4.0, we're really responding to our customers' uh, goals of, of doing automation across more things. So what we did was um, we made it database independent so you can certainly store the data anywhere, but probably more important than that, we made it that it can be the workflow engine for any system. So it was originally for Kinetic Request, but now you can hook up the Kinetic Task Engine to 
uh, Salesforce, you can hook it up to Workday, you can hook it up to Jira, you can hook it up to tasking systems. You can now have automation, the powerful kinetic automation, behind any front-end platform. And there's a lot of work to do that, um, but uh, that's going to be a platform for all of our software in the future to have that um, automation anywhere and for our customers to be able to bring kinetic automation to any of their systems. In terms of kinetic task, uh, we released 5.2, so the previous version was 5.1. It's a pretty minor change, um, but some nice benefits. So uh, we had to make some modifications so that it could support the task 4 system. Again, task 4 is going to be storing its data elsewhere. The kinetic request system can use multiple task engines, whether they're on-site or off-site. Uh, for some of our service provider customers, they might put task engines at their customers, um, so be able to have multiple task engines. Really brought uh, visibility into some of the performance uh, aspects of the application and uh, simplified the installer and really kind of made it easier to maintain. And we did throw in two features, uh, but they're sort of behind the scenes features that the average customer doesn't really need, but there are some customers that just absolutely need to uh, to take it to this level. So we added two features that you can uh, read about on community to take advantage of. And they are KSL, uh, which is a kinetic security language, and then the uh, request API. So if you want to write your own mobile applications for kinetic, or if you want to do some other kind of fancy things with kinetic, uh, you'd want that request API. In addition, we kicked off this concept called CAPS. So using Kinetic uh, a bit as a platform, we have a handful of CAPs, so Kinetic apps, that are on top of the request platform. And those are the OSC, <laughs> Operations Support Console, the Fulfillment Console, the DMC. Uh, all these things are poster stories, so you'll be able to kind of find out more about what those CAPs are. But we're seeing a trend in building things on top of requests, and we've done that ourselves. So that's a lot in terms of activity around the products. Um, that's a lot for a year. And in addition, uh, as mentioned earlier, we've got some new hires. We have a first Canadian uh, employee, but uh, we picked, we've uh, really grown in terms of employees. So we've been hiring, I don't know, maybe one employee a month, uh, and, uh, and that's kind of picking up. And I think we have three new employees in the last one month, and, uh, and they're here, so hopefully they're getting a eye-opening as to what it's like to interact with our customers, but new hires is a big thing for us. Uh, we brought on the new technology. Uh, we have new partners, so as we're expanding our platform, there's companies that are verticalizing. In fact, uh, it's a, there's a Canadian company who's building their um, business on top of this whole enterprise request management concept, so that's kind of a lot of fun, and, uh, and they're taking us to new markets. So a lot of activity in this last year. So that's all nice, but really, how did we decide to do any of that stuff? It just doesn't happen willy-nilly. So how did we get into it? What's motivating us? So really, it's hundreds of experiences with hundreds of different customers throughout the year, throughout the years, pushing our software in ways that uh, it was never intended. So if you remember, we started off with a survey product, but very quickly, companies were using it for request management. We built out the request product, and then companies wanted to do more and more automation, so we ended up improving the, the task engine, et cetera. And so our customers pushing us in areas that, um, that we uh, were not expecting, but found to be nice and generic. So some of those customers that are pushing us are um, here today, but also some are not. And so some of the things that are really kind of pushing us uh, are these new customers. So we've got Starbucks as a new customer. And the big thing there, I was uh, attending the, co the call when they were in the purchasing process, and, and they made this statement that I just, I really liked. It was, Starbucks wants to be the number one customer, or the number one company for user experience in the world, and Kinetic is going to drive it all. And I thought, awesome. And then I thought, panic. <laughs> uh, but they have great goals, and if you see what they're doing um, with their company, with uh, providing um, college education, uh, expanding throughout 
all kinds of areas in the world, uh, bringing their coffee and their products. Uh, they're really making moves. And so a lot of our customers certainly interact with us and ask for um, you know, different features. But, but Starbucks has really kind of brought it to a different level. They did like more of a partnering, and, and they kind of show us what they want to do, where they want to go. And so they're bringing some new ideas to us. We're making it easier for, for them to pull off their um, multi-language, their distributed management, their um, regional base visibility uh, into the product. And so we're doing these things to help Starbucks, but indirectly they help you. Uh, First Solar is another uh, new customer for us, and the big thing for them, uh, they, uh, they wanted to interact with the Microsoft Office 365 product. <laughs> so, um, so the big thing there was we were able to start building handlers and bridges and that kind of thing to interact with the Microsoft Office 365, which was a, a new thing for us, and it's more of a kind of a real-time interaction, so being able to bring those softwares together uh, was, a, was a nice driver. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond is here. Uh, they've got a poster story, so I, I won't uh, spoil the story for them, but they're driving some great things for us, too. Uh, the Army National Guard is doing some really neat work. They're uh, building 50-some catalogs uh, on top of Kinetic, so one for every state and then uh, a couple others. So tons of catalogs and making it easy to build a lot of uh, catalogs and distribute that management. And then we have a, a Swedish customer who's actually attended uh, Vattenfall, and they're uh, bringing some nice things, uh, requirements to us too, but that was kind of fun, so is it Vattenfall, you, there you go, <laughs> so that's fun for me, I'm Swedish, uh, so we were, we were chatting a bit last night, but anyway, so they're bringing some nice ideas for us too. And then our existing customers, this is really the thing that pushes us probably the most really is pretty much everybody buys Kinetic for a specific reason and they solve that need. And that might be three months, six months, a year, whatever. But then they get the product and they see what they can do. And then it's round two or round three of Kinetic where they just go, all right, we wanna go across the country, across the globe, across different markets. And, um, and so that's what they're doing. And so Schneider Electric is a great story for us. They're actually kind of, um, does anybody know who Schneider Electric is? I'm sure Kinetic people do. Um, they are roughly the GE of France. So they're a huge uh, electric company. They own, I think, 118 other electric companies, and they're really strong in theming and branding. And the whole green energy movement is really a, a big thing there. So they are probably um, our most themed and branded company. And so we did a fantastic project for them, and they really brought a lot of the responsive um, design work into Kinetic, and so they helped us drive. Uh, Aegon's here. Uh, they're uh, the first task engine customer, and uh, <laughs> we certainly went through some bumps and bruises with them, but uh, they're actually kind of doing a, a relaunch, which they're calling launch, and what's really driving us there is we want to make the experience as smooth as possible for them, because the original experience five years ago was pretty difficult with the task engine, so uh, simplifying installations and management is, is really a key thing. Uh, for them. And then we also have some other great stories with the Navy uh, 311. Uh, they're just expanding uh, rapidly with the Kinetic product, and that's the ability to get help when you don't know where to go for help. And it's across the Navy. And then the U.S. Department of State is, is another great story that, uh, that we have uh, at the poster stories. So our customers are taking us in all kinds of directions. Um, and bringing us all kinds of new opportunities, and it's just a lot of fun. So that's really what's motivating us. So where are we going with all these requirements? Well, again, um, we've been driven uh, successfully by the, the past experiences, um, and, and again, kicking off the best quarter ever. And where are we going? I'm going to predict we're going to have the best year ever, and it's because of our platform move. So. What is this uh, platform? Well, it's really about continuing our philosophy of making it easier for people to adopt things, um, make their ba day better, and to be able to stay in the zone. So once you get started with something, we want to make it very easy to go boom, 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 and get it completed. And so but to do that, we're looking to have everything be API enabled. So you can interact with Kinetic just very quickly. You don't necessarily have to go into the Kinetic interface, the Kinetic 
product will be there. Uh, by way of an API, it might create tasks, it might create uh, workflows, it will do alerts, um, approvals, all that kind of thing by way of APIs. So indirectly, you can use Kinetic um, and not even know it because API is everywhere. And to be able to create all kinds of these little services, again, approvals, workflows, et cetera, that are just embedded into other areas. And so we're going to API enable every single product we have, so request, survey, calendar, schedule, response, but that glue that's tying it all together is going to be the task engine. And we're doing that really to kind of bring some freedom to our choices. So we want to bring the kinetic solution, the task engine, um, the, re the response product, calendar, et cetera, to any project within an organization. So whether it's a small project, a uh, big project, pilots, um, temporary projects, be able to size the kinetic solution really small or go really large. So what is this platform for success all about? So kinetic request has typically been used for self-service and automation and basically making people happy. But it was open and extendable <laughs> was the key. And so although people would start the product off with a request management or service catalog project, they would quickly enhance it to do other things. And those things would be order processing, inventory management, timesheets, visitor check-in. The list goes on and on and on. Not necessarily request management work, but the framework was there and they were extending it. And so what was happening is request is becoming the system of record not just a system of engagement. So we always plan Kinetic to gather this data and interact with other backend systems to provide uh, functionality. But now Kinetic is starting to become the system of record for these different areas. And that's the trend that's going on. So it's open extendable, but the Kinetic request part was getting in the way. They liked the forms, they liked the workflow but they didn't necessarily need catalogs, they didn't need categories, they didn't need pricing, they didn't need all these uh, catalog or request management concepts. They needed the workflow and the forms, et cetera. So we saw this core being used all over the place, and that core is what is being extended. So I'd like to introduce to you guys Kinetic Core. Have you guys seen the catalog yet? It's actually running on Kinetic Core. So this is our new framework. It's the next generation of the Kinetic um, request framework. So we'll still have the current framework, but we're going to have a new framework that has a new core to it. Uh, goals of simple administration, scalability, that freedom, et cetera. And that's where we're going. And Kelly Heikela will talk about that right after this. So going back to the KEG catalog, um, the core product is supporting this whole thing, and we've got, in there we've got the agenda. Uh, have, have people been using the keg catalog at all? Scavenger hunts, et cetera. So you should you know, find the agenda in there, scavenger hunt, news, local attractions, and probably most of all, feedback. We're trying to uh, make this a responsive event, so as we get some information, feedback, and what people like to see, what like to change, uh, we can do so. So feel free to give us some feedback on there. In terms of the agenda, so obviously I kicked off a little bit here today, we're going to go into the Kinetic Core next. Uh, so we'll be talking about the new platform. And then really probably the best thing of KEG is the poster stories, and that follows after Core. And so we'll have uh, poster stories where companies can show what they've been doing. You can see what other companies uh, are doing with the Kinetic product and where they're taking it. And, uh, and that's really probably the, the number one thing to get out of KEG is that poster stories and to see what other people are doing. Then we'll have the uh, evening inno innovation where you can get into uh, touching the new product, uh, playing with it, but then see some of the extensions that we have like Squam uh, and, and Siam and all these other uh, areas that have been extensions of this core uh, platform. Then on Tuesday, uh, is everybody aware of the fun uh, run? Well, 
You don't have to be a runner. You can be walk or crawl, whatever. But it really is about getting out, um, getting some fresh air, and then seeing what uh, this Minneapolis area is like. It's actually very nice. Uh, so it'll be kind of fun to get out there with our, our friends and, and just kind of do a quick tour. Then uh, later on Tuesday, we're going to go into uh, depth on a couple of customer stories and uh, see where uh, they're taking their projects and kind of some of the project management and, and just the, some of these internal uh, areas of, of some of these larger projects and, and how they're going. And then we're going to cap it off with uh, the Wally Awards, which we started last year. And it was a lot of fun to uh, give some awards where we could recognize uh, customers and, and projects on uh, some interesting areas that uh, they've been doing. So that's really run by Ben. And then, uh, then we're going to cap it off with the trivia night uh, tomorrow night. And that, we did that last year, and that was a lot of fun, too. Uh, then the rest of the week, there'll be training. So for anybody who's attending training, that'll be Wednesday through Friday, and we'll have a number of people coming in for that. And then we'll be attending the Twins game uh, Wednesday night. So just to kind of wrap up, uh, get involved, ask questions, share uh, what you like, what you don't like, and uh, make it easier for everybody to make uh, tomorrow a better day. So with that, I don't know if everybody knows this, but uh, may the fourth be with you. So. <laughs> Thank you.